We have yet another one to uh, throw past you here. This one's a bit challenging, so take a minute, pause the video, go through and find all the things, uh, and if you go through the standard uh, algorithm that we kind of work through, you probably won't miss any of them, but this is a challenging one, so take your time and uh, unfreeze the video, come back when you've got an idea to look at it. All right, hopefully that's given you a minute, and let's start to work on this challenging EKG here. So we'll start with rate. Uh, <clears throat> rate's fairly easy on this one. We'll just count the number of QRSs down at the uh, bottom through the rhythm strip, uh, and again, multiply by six because it's a 10 second strip. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, we get a 13th one in there, good. Uh, 13 times six using the powers of uh, elementary school math gives us a rate of 78. Uh, yep, that was right, good for me. All right, how about rhythm? <clears throat> Let's look at the rhythm here. Uh, one of the easy places we're gonna be able to look for P waves is usually in lead two, which there happens to be a long strip of lead two down here. So let's look here. So do we see bumps that look like P waves? Well, this thing looks a little funny here, but I don't think it's actually a P wave. I'll tell you why in just a second. This, however, might be a P wave, but it's a little bit away from that QRS complex. However, I see the same thing here. It's a little bit away from the QRS complex. I see the same thing here. I think that's probably the P wave right in the center of the magnification there. Uh, if I go up and look at <clears throat> some other leads, uh, I sort of see the same thing. Uh, places where it's a little more clear what's QRS complex and what's not, like lead V2, this looks like the P wave and that looks like the QRS complex. Uh, this little thing looks like the P wave, that's the QRS. That's the P wave, that's the QRS. Um, <clears throat> now, I mentioned before, there seemed to be a little fun something funny here, and that is when I look at lead two, I see this little bump at the beginning of the QRS, just right there. Let's see if we can make that a little bigger. Um, you might be tempted to say, well, I think that's the P wave. Well, how do you know though, uh, the thing that I usually do is compare it to other things. And I'm gonna say this is part of the QRS complex and here's why. Because this beat that I'm looking at right here down at the bottom, let me get my uh, pointer back. Um, <clears throat> this beat, when the way that the EKG machine spits these out, this beat is the same beat that's here, is the same beat that's here, is the same beat that's here. This beat here is the same beat that's here, is the same beat that's here, it's the same beat that's here. It's different from this beat, uh, but just so you know, this is a tracing. These are all happening simultaneously. So I can compare the morphology here, and I look up and I see, oh, okay, that looks maybe a little more convincingly like it is part of the QRS. And maybe here this, yeah, that is actually part of the QRS complex. Uh, that's what I kind of see here. I can take and I can slide down and say if it's it, this little bump here, just by virtue of where it lands on this one, that's part of the QRS um, <clears throat> because it's all looking at the same beat. That may not be super clear, but, uh, but I think watch it again, look at it again, I think you'll understand what I'm saying. Long story short, that can't be the P wave uh, because it is part of the QRS complex uh, up here. And so this looks like a much more clear P wave following that. And so sliding down, P waves in this case look like they're gonna end up right like that. So those are P waves uh, here. These are QRS complexes. Again, a challenging EKG, but we'll call this sinus rhythm. Rate, rhythm, axis, let's look at the axis. This one actually has a little something different to see uh, from where the normal ones uh, that we usually encounter are. So in this case, we look and we see this is positive in lead one, uh, the QRS complexes are upright. In lead two, they are negative on this one. And in lead AVF, which is the one that I usually look at, they are predominantly negative. Mm -hmm. So we are positive in one, uh, negative in two, negative in AVF. If we go and look at the <clears throat> um, look at the axis uh, chart itself, it looks something like this. So we start off with uh, zero being in the center of our heart, right? Start there. When you look at the axes, we said we're positive in lead one. So to go positive in lead one means you have to go something like that. Uh, <clears throat> so if it's positive in lead one, 
the uh, axis has to be somewhere over here because negative lead one is negative over here. Once it crosses zero, it's positive over here. Maybe I'm over explaining this, but you got to do it at some point. So positive and lead one, so it has to lie on this half of the pi. We also said it's positive in lead two, or sorry, negative in lead two in this one. So positive in lead two is down here, and this is, uh, so it would have to lie something down here, but negative in lead two has to lie somewhere above up here. So where does lead one positive intersect with lead two negative? It's basically just in these little squares up here. And so we already know we're getting into probably left axis deviation on this one. Uh, we could throw in lead AVF, which runs about like that. So again, if you it's negative in lead AVF, if it was positive, it would be down here. If it's negative, it has to sit up here. So where does negative in two, which is up here, negative in AVF, which is up here, and positive in lead one, which is over here, sit? It sits in these little squares uh, here. So this puts us into left axis deviation for what it's worth. So positive in lead one, positive, negative in two, negative in AVF gives us left axis. Again, we're just looking at how to read the EKG, not necessarily what you do with it. So that's, that's the axis thing, and that's the last I'll say about it today. So, so far, we've got uh, rate 78, sinus rhythm, uh, a left axis. Rate rhythm axis, how about the intervals? Let's look at the three intervals that I really care about. First one being the PR interval. We said that, uh, let's just use this one. We can see this one fairly easily. We'll say the P wave starts here and the QRS complex starts here. Does the P wave, the start of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex, does that take place in less than one big box. So it looks like it starts here and uh, there is an equivalent spot in the next big box. It is not. So therefore this looks like a long uh, <clears throat> PR interval, which, uh, which in fact is the case. So a long PR interval, the distance we can calculate, but we don't necessarily have to uh, for what we're doing. Long PR. All right, how about the QRS complex? How about the width of it? It should be under three little boxes. So if we look here, it looks like we start with uh, right about here, and there's one, two, three, and QRS complex is still going. So this is going to be a wide complex QRS. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we've got a long PR, we've got a wide complex QRS, and how about the QT interval? Well, in this case, if we look at the R to R interval, which is what we normally do, i.e. the space between humps here, uh, the T wave should finish by halfway through there. And it looks like to my eye that it probably does. So probably a normal uh, QT interval. So what's that gives us? It gives us a uh, <clears throat> long PR interval, a wide QRS complex. Uh, and I, I think on here, the actual QT measured out, it, it again does not to my eye look particularly long. However, that's where you can get fooled a little bit. The computer says that the QT is actually like 560 some odd or something like that. Uh, so computer right on this one, uh, good for you computer. <clears throat> How about any blocks? Well, we have a long PR interval, so there's got to be some kind of block there, uh, and a long or wide QRS complex. So there's got to be some kind of block morphology. Let's look at the uh, uh, P wave again. It looks like the P way, or sorry, the PR interval is always consistent. Uh, so it doesn't look like it stretches out at any point. It looks like the distance from there to there is always about the same. Uh, so we'll say that this is <clears throat> probably a first degree AV block. We're not dropping any beats. It's not going uh, long, longer, longer drop. It's not going long drop, long, long drop and there's no dissociation altogether. So we'll say this is a first degree AV block. It's only a long PR interval. How about the uh, QRS complex with that uh, wideness to it? The look of this, and this is again just kind of a look, uh, these big negative fat complexes here, the big negative fat complexes here, this big negative fat complex here, that has the look of a left bundle branch block. Um, <clears throat> we don't see the positive, you know, the, the M or the rabbit ears in lead V1 that we would see with a right bundle. Uh, this looks like a left bundle, uh, which in fact it is. So we've got a left bundle branch block and we have first degree AV block. All right, rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, and blocks. 
Uh, <clears throat> how about ischemia and infarcts? We've had something abnormal on pretty much all of these. Let's see if we have anything abnormal on the old ischemia and infarct side. Uh, are we, we're looking for ST depression or ST elevation and flip T waves. So sliding down, um, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of ST depression there. Uh, hard to tell. The baseline is a little bit wandery. Is there any ST depression here? No, it doesn't really look like it. How about here? Not convincingly so. Uh, how about here? No, not convincingly so. And again, how about here? Uh, and leave AVL? No, not convincingly so. Although maybe this is a little bit, uh, depending on which beat you look at, uh, maybe a little flip T wave there, which sometimes that'll happen in lead AVL. Um, <clears throat> it seems like more prominently. Uh, how about in the precordial leads? You get, again, with a left bundle, you whichever direction the QRS complex is going, we would probably expect the ST segment to go in the opposite direction. So is that the case? In lead V1, it's mostly negative. So the QRS is mostly negative. The ST segment is going in a positive direction. Uh, now that can happen with STEMI and stuff too, and that's what makes left bundles so hard, but it looks like the ST segment is going in the opposite direction of the QRS complex, i.e. it is appropriately discordant lead V1. How about same in V2, negative QRS complex, ST segment, eh, maybe just a little bit up. Uh, big, negative S, or big negative QRS out here, ST segment has an appropriate concordant or discordant change going in the opposite direction of the main part of the QRS. Same thing here, uh, lead V4, just a little bit in V5, not too awful much. Um, and then we get down to V6. And when you look at V6 though, something looks a little different. In this case, it looks like the QRS complex is mostly negative but the ST segment is going down a little bit. It's got a little bit of ST depression, and when we zoom out, that might look a little more apparent to us. So in this case, that's somewhat concerning that there may be concordant changes, i.e. whichever direction the QRS is mostly going, the ST segment ought not to go that way. In this case, it is going along with what looks like the QRS complex, and so that that is concerning. Um, when the ST segment goes with the QRS complex, that's when you get concerned in the setting of a left bundle branch block that this might actually be a significant change like a STEMI. Now, um, <clears throat> there are two things that sort of save us here. So that's con that's concerning. What we do have, luckily, was uh, the patient's old EKG, which has that same finding on it. And the other thing that's kind of important is when you look at the whole QRS complex too, uh, you notice in this case, that there's this big fat part back here that even though it doesn't, you know, it's not real spiky, I'll call it, uh, but it is prominent and wide. The, it, it's more about the volume of the uh, QRS complex than it is the, the individual height of any one part of it. So uh, realistically, most of the QRS volume kind of sits back here. And so a little bit of ST uh, depression might be appropriate. Uh, in that case, it, it seems to like it's probably actually going in the opposite direction. But this is a good example of times when you would be concerned about ST changes in the setting of a left bundle branch block. All right, so we got rate, rhythm, axis, intervals and blocks, ischemia and infarcts. Uh, any other patterns that we see? Man, we've seen enough already, so I'm just going to say there's no patterns on here. How about a final impression? Well, we've got sinus rhythm with a normal rate. Uh, we've got a first degree AV block. We've got a left bundle branch block. And in the setting of the left bundle branch block, we've got some concordant, inappropriately concordant ST depression in lead V6, which might be concerning for ischemia or infarct. And that's a lot for this one EKG. Now, what, uh, what we actually found on this one is this uh, has a whole lot of different things that we see on it. This was an EKG from an elderly patient whose heart has had a lot of mileage and a lot of time to develop that first degree AV block, that left bundle branch block, uh, and that same morphology. So in this case, this is actually a patient that did not have any cardiac type symptoms. This is just the way their EKG looks all the time. So this is a potentially frightening looking EKG, um, but in the setting of... Uh, in the setting of an elderly person uh, with no symptoms concerning for it, it was done for other reasons uh, that, and no obvious changes, then actually a bit less concerning. But again, if this was a, a young uh, 20s, 
30s, 40s year old guy who came in with crushing chest pain, I'd be concerned about that uh, in uh, V6 and potentially about a new left bundle as well. All right, so lots of stuff on this one. Hopefully we at least were able to uh, knock out all the big parts. And if you think I'm wrong about something, please uh, you know, let us know in the comments, leave comments, like us, uh, like, share, subscribe is I think what the kids are saying nowadays. So otherwise stay safe out there and we'll try to keep them coming out. Talk to you soon.